I get a lot of questions on the study property called use inertial relief. There's an explanation in the help file for what it does. However, many users read the explanation and still are a bit confused about what it does exactly. I hope to clarify it to you with a couple of examples. In this example, I'm applying a force in the negative x direction. There are practically no fixtures on this model. The only fixtures on here are set to just stabilize the model, not to absorb any of the load. So normally this model would accelerate in the negative x direction. And I, the study would fail because it's a static study. So to balance the load, I'm applying a counter acceleration using gravity. I've calibrated the force and the gravity to cancel each other out nearly perfectly. When I run the study, I get a result that looks like this. Try to remember this pattern for a moment. Next what I'd like to show you is the same force applied, this time without any counter acceleration applied. In order to run the study, I need to turn on Use Inertial Relief. With this option enabled, I see a stress pattern like this when I run this study. Look familiar? It's exactly the same pattern I showed you before when I applied a counter acceleration. Let's look at another example. In this example, I'm applying a torque around the cylinder. As you might have guessed, I'm going to apply a counter acceleration to perfectly balance the currently applied torque. The direction of the centrifugal load here, the counter acceleration load, can be a bit mis misleading. The torque is going counterclockwise, and the counter acceleration will force a deformation to go in the opposite direction. I've calibrated these two so that they nearly perfectly cancel each other out, and I've applied some stabilization fixtures. Here's what the result looks like. I've cut a section of the result here so you can see how the, the region where the force is applied actually does deform circumferentially. But you see that that circumferential deformation all but disappears when I move closer and closer to the center due to the counter acceleration canceling out a lot of that effect. If I run the same study, this time without any of the counter acceleration applied, in other words with only the torque, and as a matter of fact with no fixtures whatsoever to stabilize things, just the torque. I'll turn on the inertial relief option here as well. When I run this study, does this pattern look familiar? It's the same as the one from before. So we see that the inertial relief option is used to counteract any accelerations that might exist in your model, whether they're translational accelerations or rotational accelerations. Basically, when you turn on inertial relief, it will apply sort of a pseudo-gravity to counteract any acceleration translationally, and it'll also apply a pseudo centrifugal acceleration loads to counteract any rotational accelerations. How is this useful? Here I have an assembly. I want to run a simulation on this assembly. Notice use inertial relief is currently turned off. When I run the study, I get an error message. In this case, it says the model is unstable. When I click OK to the error message, it says the study failed, and it doesn't tell me much else. It's not very handy for troubleshooting. If I go to the study properties and turn on use inertial relief, if there were any instabilities, this inertial relief will counteract those with counter accelerations. So 
So this way, when I run the study, I get a warning that says there's a significant external imbalance in the y direction. Do you wish to continue? Yes. I also get another warning about large displacements. It says click no to solve with small displacement. By clicking no, I'll get a result almost immediately. And I can tell, oops, I forgot to connect the tube to this joint here. I'll now take care of the problem with a pin connector. And now I might try rerunning the study without inertial relief again. And this time it succeeds without error. So you might use inertial relief as a troubleshooting tool. Other uses for it and what its intended use is to balance loads such as in uh, aircraft where you don't have any hard fixtures. I'm sure you've read this in the help file or in other resources. Also you can use it to balance motion loads if you have imported your, mo your loads from SOLIDWORKS motion into SOLIDWORKS simulation. Typically upon import it do SOLIDWORKS simulation doesn't add any fixtures it just has a load balanced model one that's been balanced by forces and torques and etc. So inertial relief for these type of models is by default turned on. Mostly what I use it for is a troubleshooting tool. Frequently if I'm bumping into inst unstable model warnings or if I get errors that say it couldn't reach equilibrium, I'll turn on both of these options to try to stabilize the model. I'll make sure that once I've solved the problem though that I turn off inertial relief. This option will compromise the accuracy of the results especially if you have fixtures. That's because partially the counter accelerations are applied even when your fixtures are stabilizing the model. However, this option is typically okay to leave on. It doesn't compromise the accuracy of results too much, if at all. I hope that this was illuminating for you. Thanks and take care.